Hi, my name is Matt St. Jean, and welcome to my Patriots Draft Breakdown. I'm going to be going through this draft class player by player and evaluating every single pick. Now, to tell you the method we're going to be doing, I'm not evaluating based on draft grade. I'm not telling you if this was a good pick or a bad pick. I'm going to be looking at each player's film and giving you a year one and a year three evaluation. So what that means, year one, it's pretty simple. Right now, with what the player is based on what they've shown on tape in college, how could they be used this season? What do the Patriots expect them to be on the roster as a rookie? Year three means looking down the road with the traits that they have, what could they develop into, looking at the roster situation, how could they be used, where could they fit on the depth chart, things like that, which is really going to vary once you get to the later rounds versus the top of the draft. But that's the format we're going to be doing. kind of sets the expectations for everybody so you know exactly what to expect and you're not getting too high or too low on guys coming in. Because there's some guys that take a while to get into the league and other guys who are going to start at a high level right away and kind of plateau from there. So that way people aren't calling somebody a bust too quickly. And that way they're not saying this guy's going to be the next star and being disappointed when he isn't that two or three years later. So we're just going to start at the top with Kyle Duggar, the safety out of Division II, Lenore Ryan, picked at number 37. Let's get into it. Now, despite being New England's first draft pick at 37 overall, Kyle Duggar may have a hard time seeing the field in year one. Safety may be the deepest position on this roster, and he'll have to sit behind the dynamic duo of Devin McCourty and Patrick Chung, as well as veteran Terrence Brooks and free agent signee Adrian Phillips. Seeing the field early will be instrumental in the adjustment from Division II to the NFL level, and the easiest opportunity for that for Duggar will be on special teams. At Lenore Ryan, the safety became the only player in school history to have two games with two punts returned for touchdowns. Duggar will have every opportunity to be the starting punt returner in New England next season, and he can be incredibly explosive in that role. He'll be the biggest defensive back on the roster at 220 pounds, and he still ran the 40-yard dash in under 4.5 seconds. That size and speed, combined with vision and quickness, make him very difficult to take down in the open field, and he was a nightmare for D2 opponents to tackle in the kicking game. If Duggar can be this team's top punt returner this season, that's going to unlock some other opportunities for him. Why? That gets him on the game day active roster. He's not going to be on that list of a couple players 90 minutes before a kickoff who's not going to suit up. Like we've seen from some guys, he isn't somebody that's going to be taking a red shirt year just sitting on the sideline in street clothes carrying a clipboard around. For a guy that's 24 years old coming out of D2 trying to adjust to the NFL, that's not going to help you. He needs that hands-on experience to actually make the adjustments and get up to NFL speed, both physically and mentally. You're not going to do that from the bench. So if he's the team's top punt returner, he's going to get on the field. And if he's on that roster, then it's not just going to be those five snaps a game as your punt returner. They'll get him involved in other phases as well. I anticipate you'll see him on your kickoff return, kickoff coverage, punt coverage units. These are all things that his skill set shows he should be good at doing. He should be an asset in those phases. And at the very least, he can be a body out there that isn't a liability while he adjusts to this next level. Now, in addition to that, if he's on the roster, then he can figure into the mix a little bit on defense. Uh, He's not quite ready right now to be a starter or to be a guy who you're going to trust to play 15, 20 snaps a game as a rotational guy. But in some situations, he can come in and play 5 to 10 snaps. Uh, Specifically, I'd say against teams that run two or three tight end looks. That is really where, um, at the Senior Bowl, that's where he showed off his skill set. We're going to get into that tape right now. But that one-on-one coverage against tight ends is something that he can do really well right off the bat, and that's where he can add to a defense. All right, we're going to pick it up here with three reps from the Senior Bowl of Kyle Duggar in man coverage against Adam Troutman, who's one of the top prospects at the position in this draft. We're going to start with this one early, and this is just a basic rep. He's going to follow him from that inline position, stay with him, And at no point on this play does Adam Troutman ever have a chance to be open. That's just really solid coverage. Then on this next play, you're going to see that length and that recovery. This is still pretty good coverage by Duggar. 
but Troutman able to get a little bit of a step on him, and you see that length come into play. Able to rip the arm away and knock that ball loose. And then you get down here into the red zone. This is a really tough position to be in. It's a, it's a pick play, but he's able to make that up. You see that recovery speed, and then an absolutely fantastic tackle from Duggar. Uh, length wraps up, finds the ball, and takes the ball carrier to the ground. Not a lot of safeties that can make plays like that, and this is against an NFL tight end that Duggar is able to do that. So let's set the expectation for Kyle Duggar as a rookie. First and foremost, he's going to contribute the most on special teams. He can be electric with the ball in his hands as a punt returner or as a kick returner. I expect that's where you're going to see him used the most. They're not going to ask him to be a playmaker on defense yet because there's a lot of depth at the safety position and that's going to help his development. He's in a low-pressure situation where he can sit behind Patrick Chung and Devin McCourty and really learn how to operate at the NFL level, both behind the scenes and meetings and in practices and on the field. He gets to watch some of the best in the business every single week, and he's going to get some opportunities on defense, some other opportunities on special teams where he can grow, but where he can grow at his own pace. Now let's try to figure out what the Patriots envision out of Kyle Duggar going into year three. And there's really two questions that we need to answer here. The first of which is, what do the Patriots expect from him? What do they think he could be? So we're going to take a look at the tape, and we're going to see what kind of role he could have in the defense, what his skill set is. The other big question is, what does he need to fix? No prospect is perfect coming out of college. No, no player is perfect even in the NFL. There's always room for improvement. So we're also going to go through his tape at Lenore Ryan and look at the little things that he can be doing better so when he gets to the next level, he can clean up his game. And by year three, if he's able to clean all of these little things up, then he should be the kind of impact player that the Patriots expect when you're drafting somebody as your first selection at 37 overall. So let's uh, start this off. We're going to look at some things that Kyle Duggar does well. In pass coverage, he's very good in these intermediate or shallow zones. That's where he's done a lot of very good things. It's one area where Lenore Ryan used Duggar quite a bit. We're going to take a look at this play from back in 2018 against North Greensville. So he's lined up on the right side of this formation, or the defense left, the offense is right. And you're going to see three receivers to that side. You've got the outside receiver, the slot receiver, and then the tight end lined up on the line of scrimmage. And there's four defenders over there. You've got outside corner, slot corner, linebacker, and Duggar as the strong safety coming into the box. So we'll let this play out. You can see him come up here. And he's just going to make a real nice play to jump on that ball and get the interception. So as we watch this again, you watch the tight end. Duggar recognizes this formation right away. He, he starts and looks outside to the number two receiver. He sees that he's breaking out, which means that's no longer, no longer Duggar's responsibility. He comes back to three, which is the tight end. You've got the quarterback throwing the ball. And you know that this is one of those out rounds. This is kind of a, a stick concept that you're seeing right here where you have the tight end running your stick route where he's going to run that. Basically, it's, it's either a, a short hitch or an out route. Your number two is running that flat and your, your outside receiver is running the go. And Duggar just jumps right on that ball. It's a heads up play. Great, great instincts. And again, this is, this is from two seasons ago. So even when he was younger, He's making plays like this on the ball. Oh, and this one's picked off, going the other way. Now we're going to jump forward a season. This is against St. Augustine last year. This is early in the game. You have Duggar lined up over your slot receiver on the left side of the offensive formation. So they have three receivers on the left side, two receivers on the right. Duggar's lined up over that number three. So if you look at this, what this looks like from your defense is a six-man pressure an all-out blitz where everybody's in man coverage on the back end. But this is a disguise. This is actually going to be a zone blitz that's called. So you're only going to get four rushers. you got guys dropping out. And Duggar knows exactly what his responsibility is here. So even though he's lined up over that number three receiver, the number three is running that drag. Duggar knows the second he sees him cut in like that, that that's no longer his responsibility. 
So what does he do? He turns around, gets his head, and locates the number two. He sees he's on that in-breaking route, and he's just going to mirror him and stay with him and completely take that option away. Quarterback never has it, and he's forced to scramble. This is just a great heads-up play from Duggar, and those are the kinds of instincts you really want to see in the zone defense. Scramble, trying to run left, trips, and he's going to be run out of bounds. Now we're going to jump forward a little bit later into the same game, and we're going to see something a little bit different from him. So in those first two plays, you see him playing closer to the line of scrimmage. Now we're going to see him get a little bit deeper. So this, this looks like some kind of cover two look, but he's going to rotate deep and just come underneath this ball and make a nice play on it. So as we watch this again, there's nothing super fancy here, but this kind of shows off the speed and shows off the confidence. Lenore Ryan knows that they can put him back there in the middle of that defense playing some kind of single high safety look because he can do that. He's fast enough. He has the instincts right here. I mean, he takes away that seam route very well. That is not open at all. And the quarterback underthrows it. He's able to make a play on it. And that's where you see that punt return ability coming in. He tracks the ball in the air. And, you, you know, you see a little bit of an Ed Reed type flash right here. Once the ball's in his hands, he's making guys miss, he's able to get down the field. When you have a guy like that who's not just able to force turnovers, but go the other way and make yards with it, that's just as important as it is on special teams. It's a rare talent to see guys have that. And then when you get to the basic level, just the fact that he can rotate back there and play that, there's not a lot of strong safeties in this league. You can really feel confident to, to take them out of the box, to play them in single high looks, and you can't really feel confident that they're going to make plays on the ball like that. So that kind of speaks to his, I, I think you could call him a combo safety, a guy who can play free safety or strong safety, and really do a lot of different things on the back end of a defense. Duggar with the interception, his second of the ball game, playing center field. Now, for any safety that's going to play in the box, that's going to be a strong safety at the NFL level. There's something you got to be able to do, and that, that's you got to be able to tackle, you got to be able to play the run, you got to be able to read ball carriers and do things like that. You got to be able to make important stops. No, no defensive coordinator is going to trust you to be the guy that's playing box safety, that's being that extra linebacker, if you will, coming up if you can't do some of those linebacker things. If, you, if you're going to be a liability in the run game, you're just not going to see the field. So we're going to take a look at back-to-back -back plays here from the Senior Bowl. Now, this is late in the game, which doesn't really matter as much, but if you want to talk situation, we have a second and a five here. So Duggar's lined up basically at an outside linebacker position. He is over the two tight end side on the near side of the field. So second and five here, you're going to notice he reads the tight end as well. He's able to get vision into the backfield, picks up the ball carrier, and that's a strong wrap tackle. Now here on third down, this is where it really matters. They're going to come back with that same look and come back with the exact same play. And Duggar is at one of two guys to get into the backfield here, wraps up, and there you see that aggressive form tackle on third and one that's going to stop your runner short of the sticks. If you're making plays like that in the NFL, you're going to make a lot of money. And little things like that, that tackling ability is going to really help him get on the field. And by year three, I mean, a guy that's coming in, that's, these are plays that Patrick Chung makes. Kyle Duggar can step up and make these plays. It allows you a little bit more freedom with your assets moving forward as an organization. So when you go through all this stuff and you add it up, you see a guy with some good traits. He's got good instincts in shallow zones, he can go play deep, and he's got good instincts against the run. He's got some fundamentals there, and I mean, at times he dominates with that at the Division II level, which is what you want to see from an NFL player. Um, and with instincts like that, I mean, Duggar's a guy who can really make a name for himself. However, he is a guy that's falling into the second round. He's not a perfect prospect. There's things that he needs to work on, or, or possibly some negatives that you can look at. So we're going to take a look at a San Augustine game. And this is, I mean, we talked about him as a guy that can play the center of the field. This is true, but he's not an Earl Thomas. He's not a Devin McCourty that's going to threaten you sideline to sideline. So we look here, quarterback looks him off, and he's going to throw to that right side of the field as Duggar drops into the single high. 
and you look, I mean, he just, he really doesn't get that much distance over there. He's barely getting to, like, halfway to the numbers, between the numbers and the hash marks by the time that ball lands. And he has 4-4-9 four, four, speed, which is good for a strong safety. For a free safety, it's closer to average. So, he's, I mean, there's going to be some liabilities. If, if you're trusting him to play single high every single snap, if you're playing a lot of cover one stuff and he's in the middle of the field, the opposing offenses are going to try to burn you down the sidelines and they will have some success there. He just doesn't have that top of the line speed unless potentially you'd be asking him to drop a few pounds, in which case you're going to lose that versatility for him to be able to come into the box. Now we'll jump ahead a little bit on this same drive, and we're going to notice one other flaw that you see pretty commonly in Kyle Duggar's game, and that's that he just takes the wrong angle to the ball carrier when trying to make a tackle. Frequently, he just comes in too low of an angle. So we're going to see this here against, against St. Augustine, comes in too low, gets picked by his own guy, the ball carrier is able to get extra yards. I do love the fight, he gets through it, he is involved in the tackle, and he's a very good form tackler. Once he gets to the ball carrier, he wraps up very well. We saw that earlier with the tackle he made on Adam Troutman to save a touchdown. But sometimes he just doesn't get there the right way, or as we're going to see in this clip against Carson Newman, he'll over pursue. Here he comes down too low, gets in the wrong gap, and all of a sudden that cutback lane is wide open for the quarterback. It's little things like that, especially if he's going to be playing on kickoff coverage units or just regular defense stuff. You have to be disciplined, you have to be fundamentally sound. If you're still making those mistakes in year three, then he's just not going to see the field. Belichick doesn't put up with this kind of stuff. But if he's able to correct those little things, that's going to take him from a rotational safety to a guy who can start every single game and be a difference maker and, and be a really consistent guy for this defense. So in conclusion, Kyle Duggar is a high ceiling prospect with ridiculous athleticism and the versatility to play all over a defense. However, there are some mental errors in his tape, and there's some stuff he's going to need to clean up there. He's going to get opportunities on special teams from day one, where he can be fantastic and really make an impact on the game. And then hopefully he can sit behind it. some talented safeties in Devin McCourty, Patrick Chung, and the rest of that safety room with a great coaching staff as well, and learn for a few seasons before he's asked to be a playmaker. Obviously, New England has faith that he can develop into that kind of guy who can make an impact on the defense, or else you wouldn't be picking him at 37 overall. The only thing left now is to wait and see if he can reach that potential. Thank you for watching. Once again, my name is Matt St. Jean. Please make sure to like and subscribe to my channel. You can also follow me on Twitter. I'll put the link to that down in the description. I'll be back next week to break down your other second round pick in New England. That's defensive end or linebacker Josh Uche. And once again, thank you for watching.